coming up on the East End. I hit the jackpot. I'm doing what I love with people who love what I'm doing. Set sail on a private oyster cruise and learn how to shuck like a pro. Plus. Well, our family has been here for a long time. We're a colonial era family, long before the American Revolution. We head to a North Fork family farm for prime strawberry picking season. And the recipes have been handed down to me through two other generations. Take a step back in time at a legendary luncheonette. From lavish Hamptons hotspots to local North Fork hidden gems. Come with us as we explore the people and places that make up Long Island's East End. Welcome to the East End. I'm Erin Colton. And I'm Joe Arena. And with June upon us, we're celebrating the unofficial start to summer here on the North and South Fork. Visitors from across the tri-state area, they are headed east to visit the beaches, the vineyards, the farms, all in peak season. And we want to help you get there. Take a look. Joe and I are honored to be a part of this year's iconic Hampton Jitney fleet. Yeah, and this isn't just your average bus. They take hundreds of thousands of people to the East End every year. And you can win a free ride. And here's how. Play along in our East End trivia game. You'll see questions pop up during the show. Scan the QR code and submit your answers at the end of the program for a chance to win a free trip to the East End on Hampton Jitney, plus some News 12 swag. We'll tell you more about Jitney's storied past a little later in the show. First, we are hitting the water for an oyster tasting experience like no other at Founders Oyster Farm in Southhold. Come on aboard. Thanks, Steve. My pleasure. Uh, Welcome aboard. This is awesome. There's one place you'll find Steve Schnee during the summertime on Long Island's East End, his boat on the half shell. This is a 1936 Chris Craft boat. It was a labor of love. I and a friend we sanded, we scraped, we painted, we worked for an entire winter nonstop to make this boat seaworthy. Steve's company, Founders Oyster Farm in Southold, offers a boat cruise that not only lets you sit back and relax, but also takes you to the exact place in the Peconic Bay where he farms his oysters. I basically have two farm sites, one here, which is the one I started with, and then two years ago, got a second site. It is one of the more unique oyster experiences out here. We're gonna go up to my oyster farm. I'll pass over my oyster farm, I'll explain where it is, how I farm, and where the oysters that we today come from. Isn't that cool? Just saying, I'm gonna go to my oyster farm. It's very cool. On the half shell, lets people savor oysters, savor local sparkling wine, and enjoy being on the water for a two hour mini vacation. Life looks a lot different for Steve now though. Finding oysters is his second career. His first, tracking down stories across the world. I worked in the media for almost 40 years. I was in South Africa when Nelson Mandela was released. I was at the Berlin Wall when the wall came down. I was in Saudi Arabia for the Gulf War in Kuwait. We would be down in Chile covering the riots against Pinochet and you would get doused by water cannons, get shot at. Working as a producer overseas had its risks. It put stress on a family. The stars aligned and my wife, my kids and I were able to cobble together a different kind of life out here. And I started to learn the art and the science of growing oysters at the Cornell Cooperative Marine Science Program. And then I said, I should try to do this commercially. If you book a cruise on the half shell, it's your boat, it's your charter, it's what you want. If you want me to shuck and jive and talk about oyster farming, happy to do it. If you just want to sit and bring a cold cut platter from Costco or from a fancy restaurant. Steve also lets his riders shuck their own oysters before they eat them, and his first mate can teach you. You take the tip of the knife, and you'll find it's called the hinge here. Steve, I'm shucking. Just stick it in, wiggle, and turn. I'm actually good at this. So good. To be able to do this, take people out on the half shell for a business. I hit the jackpot. I'm doing what I love with people who love what I'm doing, who people who love this experience. 
it's a win-win for everybody. The East End is a wonderful, wonderful, special place. It has everything. There are vineyards, there are farms, there's local produce. Don't forget about the oysters. Oh, there are oysters too. Trading war zones for simpler life on Long Island's East End, one shuck at a time. For the longest period of time, the world was my oyster. Now oysters are my world. Such a cool way to experience oysters. Right, right from the water, too. Eating them right there. Stuff. It's also prime picking season here on the East End. That's right. Strawberries are ripe and ready to be picked off the vines, including at Wickham's Fruit Farm. There are a lot of mainstays here on the North Fork, and at Wickham's Fruit Farm in Kutchog, their roots run deep. Well, our family has been here for a long time. We're a colonial era family, long before the American Revolution. Eleven generations of Wickham's have owned and worked this 200-acre piece of land. That includes the oldest cider mill on the North Fork. And in the 1940s... We were one of the first farm stands to get established, selling our product direct to the public, to sell retail our products at the farm market, and the public responded. Wickham started with potatoes, but shifted to fruits and vegetables. Potatoes grown in Maine or grown in Idaho are far cheaper to grow than here. So we saw that we were going to have to do something different. And that something different includes picking your own fruit. Depending on the season, visitors can spend the day at Wickham's collecting cherries, apples, raspberries, blackberries, peaches, pumpkins, and of course strawberries, which are now in season. Today, we pick some beauties. Tom says it's pretty easy to find the perfect one. Just look for that deep red color. There's no spray on these to worry about. That's so, what I was wondering. I no? can eat these right out of the mm -hmm. ground here, mm -hmm. which I already have several times today. <laughs> While strawberry picking attracts visitors from across New York, New Jersey, and Connecticut, so does the Wickham's homemade foods, baked goods, and jams. Our kitchen has become an important part of our business. It's been a good use for the crops. People do like it. And here at the farm stand, you can get an array of pies, but you don't want to miss the strawberry rhubarb if you love strawberry. I've been eating this pie in particular since I was like 12 years old. It's Good stuff. All right, we're with Lori right now and my daughter Jane because she loves strawberries. Lori's gonna um, show us how they make their jam, their strawberry jam. Strawberry jam, jam right? yeah. All right, so what do we got so here? So it's strawberry season, so we got our main ingredients here on the table. And only a few, fresh strawberries, some sugar, pectin, which gives the jam its consistency, and lemon juice. And after applying some muscle to the berries with a masher. Is that good? That's good. It's a pretty quick process. From start to finish, this double batch of jam takes only about an hour, and then you're ready to jar the jam. But first, a taste test. Oh my goodness, this is so good. Better than the store-bought? Like a million times better. This is how Grandma made the jam. This is actually some of Ann Wickham's recipes. And Tom says the other blueprint for success is the North Fork itself. It really is aesthetically attractive. Look out here, look at some of the things you can see out here. For me, it really works. Yeah, and if, when you get to spend that much time out there, you really learn how to pick the perfect strawberry. That's it was why great. farms like that are the mm -hmm. perfect place to go. Good stuff. All right, our next stop is an East End Brewery, started by two college buddies with a love for the North Fork. We teamed up with Discover Long Island for an inside look at Greenport Harbor Brewing Company. Sit back and relax with a summer brew, live music, and delicious food here at Greenport Harbor Brewing Company. The 13,000 square foot facility is a former car dealership, so there's a ton of room to make all of the different craft brews and still leave space for a full restaurant, indoor tasting room, and a huge lawn for additional outdoor seating. We opened up back in uh, July of 2009, and uh, our original location was in Greenport on uh, Carpenter Street, a small old firehouse that we renovated. Uh, we were there about 
uh, roughly five years, and then uh, we purchased this property in Peconic in 2012 and opened up in 2014. We have essentially uh, eight core beers, and then we offer additional beers on a seasonal basis or one-off basis. We've had proposals happen here. We've had all sorts of retirement parties, rehearsal, you know, gatherings. So it's become more of a, almost like a, um, a people's location to celebrate whenever they may be celebrating. The entire space is pet friendly, so you can bring your pup and your lawn chair and enjoy live music on the lawn in the summer months. They also host different community events throughout the year, from a chili cook-off in the winter to a dog dock diving weekend in the summer. Being involved and in giving back to the community that has really helped us in so many ways is really important to us. It feels good. And you know, anytime you see somebody, they're always a little bit happier when they leave. Greenport Harbor Brewing is such a huge staple for the Long Island community and a must visit when you're on the North Fork. For Discover Long Island, I'm Brianna McEnroe. Thanks, Brianna. Still ahead. We know how to get to and from the east end of Long Island. We head out with Hampton Jitney and see how one man's vision transformed into an East End pop culture icon. Welcome back. Well, there's certain things synonymous with the East End. Wineries, beaches, farm stands. You could add Hampton Jitney to that list. The iconic bus fleet that brings travelers east has come a long way since its first ride five decades ago. Attention riders, attention riders. Do you ever use this? Uh oh, we created a monster. Tony Diodato has been driving a Hampton Jitney bus for 35 years. It's one of my favorite things to do is drive. I love driving a bus. It's what I always wanted to do since I was a little boy. You're proud of this. What's behind that pride? The main reason is the company itself. That family-owned company is celebrating its 50th year this summer, taking riders between Eastern Long Island and New York City. There's three lines, the Montauk line, the West Hampton line, then we have the North Fork line. We have about 25 round trips a day going in and out of the city. We know how to get to and from the east end of Long Island. The Lynch family took over the business in 1988. They're still running things today with all four siblings at the helm. Our younger brother is involved, our sister is involved. We're still family-owned business, and we've been that way since the start. We operate on our own two feet. Along with a fleet of close to 60 buses and 100 drivers. But the Jitney sure looked different when it first hit the road five decades ago. It started back in 1974. A man named Jim Davis. The oil shocks of the 70s were going on and the idea was bicycles could be part of the solution. His idea was to take people, put your bike on the back, we'll take you from Southampton to Montauk or Sag Harbor to East Hampton. And he started with two vans, and he would take them, and if they had bicycles, he put the bicycles in the van for them. And it was gonna be uh, 50 cents a ride. It was popular, but it was not a financial success. And Jim, at that point, was thinking that Hampton Jitney was gonna be a write-off. In September, October, he got calls from friends and, and family members who needed to close down their house for the season and move all their stuff back to New York City. And he thought he was onto something there. By 1975, Hampton Jitney was what it is today. And those vans transformed into luxury motor coaches. It's more than just riding a bus. It's meant to be modeled after airlines, where you have a, a host person on board that is uh, not only taking care of the passengers, but serving amenities as well. First class amenities and a well-known artist behind their iconic logo. The Hampton Jitney logo goes back to 1974, but the wave art that you see next to Hampton Jitney on all of our motor coaches, that came a little bit later. And that was Roy Lichtenstein on a cocktail napkin over a drink. They came up with this design. And a well-known actress behind some of their first ads. Our original spokesperson for, for Hampton Jitney was Lauren Bacall. She did some TV commercials for us as well as some radio spots. There's also been some A-list passengers. Alec Baldwin lost his wallet on the bus. I found it in Montauk and on my way back where he got off at East Hampton. I gave him back his wallet and he gave me $10. Only 10? He didn't have to. <laughs> yeah. uh, Billy Joe, 
I pull into East Hampton once, and he pulls up with two SUVs and starts loading all these garment bags. And he goes, yeah, I know, I know. It's Christie's winter clothes that we're sending to the city. Gwyneth Paltrow's mom, Blythe Dana, she still rides with us every summer. No matter the notoriety, the Lynches say their goal is to treat every passenger like a star. We help provide a, a really beneficial utility for people. If we're doing our job right, it's um, the best part of their day. After learning all about Jitney's past, it's so much more special knowing that we were featured on one of them. Great story and what an honor, yeah. right? All right, well, if you're looking for a home that will truly stand out, how about one made entirely of glass? We take it to Watermill for a tour. Welcome to the Glass House, 986 Noyak Path. Giving us a tour of this $2.2 million property is Kyle Barisich from Compass Hamptons. This is almost a thousand square feet and we are on almost three acres. It's designed to let the outside in. It's really in conversation with this beautiful wooded spot in the Hamptons. And really you won't find anything else like it. It has such an upstate feel, yet we are just five minutes from three of the Hamptons most popular villages. You've got privacy, you've got exclusivity, and you've got room to dream here in the wooded heights of Watermill. And you've also got a second property, another house right next to it on Nyack Path. 986 and 988 are being sold together, but you can also purchase them separately. So if one of these really appeals to you, it can be yours. This is the modern tree house. This is over 1,300 square feet. We have three bedrooms, two bathrooms, plus an art studio on the lower level, all perched on this bluff overlooking the wooded paths of Watermill Heights. Once the leaves grow in in the spring, you're in your own little world. You would never even know you had a neighbor. The seller of this property just fell in love with the upstate feel. It's really perfect for that kind of buyer who values peace and quiet and privacy while wanting to take advantage of everything that the Hamptons has to offer. To see more from this home and explore other East End gems, just scan the QR code at the bottom of your screen. Still ahead, it's a Hamptons hotspot serving up classic favorites from the 50s. We're an honest place. We don't try and do any more than what the original idea of a lunch unit is. We head to Sip and Soda in Southampton, where the recipes are passed down from generation to generation. Welcome back. Well, the Hamptons is a foodie paradise with fine dining and exclusive restaurants. But at one legendary luncheonette, they're still serving things up the old fashioned way, and they have been since 1958. We had to sip and soda for burgers, homemade ice cream, and their signature lime ricky. Since 1958, Sip and Soda of Southampton has been cooking up memories with a side of tradition. We're one of the longest continuously run family food service establishments. Cheeseburger. My name is Mark Paris. I'm third generation owner of Sip and Soda in Southampton, New York. My grandparents are from a small village outside in Sparta, Greece. Came over here about 1918. And a few years later, they opened the Bridgehampton Candy Kitchen. Then in the 40s, they ran the Paradise Sweet Shop on Love Lane in Mattituck. Mark's dad and uncle learned from their parents just what it would take to run a small business. And once they were old enough, they took a chance and opened a place themselves. They bought the land, they built the building in 1957, and in 1958, right around May was when they officially opened. They did their thing, which was work hard seven days a week, tried to build the business for the community. And it worked. Now, Mark's been running the place for over 30 years. I always joked to people that I was either born with a spatula or a ice cream scoop in my hand. Growing up here, I also got to meet a lot of regulars that came and sat at the counter and just learn about meeting people. 
We're an honest place. We don't try to do any more than what the original idea of a lunch event is, which is breakfast, lunch, ice cream, which is all homemade here. And while the long running luncheonette has all the traditional dishes from stacked sandwiches to juicy burgers, their most popular items are also their best kept secrets. We have all the classic hot fudge sundaes, banana splits. Milkshakes are a huge thing of ours. Our signature drink here is called the Lime Ricky, which is an old school soda fountain drink. And this is our little secret ingredient that we came up with. We decided to start bottling it last year. The recipes have been handed down to me through two other generations. And when I was younger, I would say to my dad, where are all the recipes? Unless you have them written down somewhere. He's like, no, they're all here. The hard work that my grandparents put in and my father and uncle, they instilled that in me, carrying on the family legacy to give people a great experience. That makes me feel really good. What a place, and the thing I love about Sip and Soda the most is that it has not changed since my parents took me there. Exactly. Just, yeah. Time now to check your answers in our East End Trivia Game. If you've been playing along, scan that QR code at the bottom of your screen. It'll take you to our website where you can submit your answers for the chance to win a free trip to the East End on Hampton Jitney, plus some News 12 swag. You'll also find more information on our website about all of the places we've explored in this episode. And while you're there, let us know about your favorite places to visit on the East End, from the lavish to the local. Because it just may be our next adventure. See you next time.